and welcome to the WIHS Journal Public Affairs from 104.9. I'm Paul Kretschmer. And the topic today is traveling with your pets during the summer months. I am on the phone line with Dr. Carol Osborne. She's going to talk about uh, traveling with pets during the warm months of the year. Could you tell me um, how often people do take their their four-legged friends with them then, Doctor? Well, when people are getting ready to take a vacation, uh, the fact is uh, the majority of pet owners, over 60%, uh, like to take their four-legged friends with them. Has that changed significantly over the course of the time of your practice then? Over the last several years, uh, more and more people uh, have become inseparable from their pets. And, and quite honestly, Paul, I think uh, since the pandemic, uh, everybody's just itching to get out there and they're definitely not leaving their pets behind this year. Okay. Uh, are there any particular things that we need to be aware of depending on um, what kind of accommodations we may have on the road or for that matter the, the way we travel like between a train or, a, or an airplane? Oh, absolutely. Uh, depending upon your mode of transportation, uh, you need to plan ahead and do your homework because each venue, whether it's a plane, a train, a boat, or a car, uh, there are specific things that, that need to be addressed uh, in, in each venue. Uh, certainly, first and foremost, uh, is to visit your vet and make sure that your pet is healthy and able to travel. If your pet is very young or very old, uh, you know, pregnant, suffering from a debilitating disease, for example, those pets are probably best left at home. But if you have a healthy pet uh, who is able to travel uh, and your, your veterinarian agrees, you know, you, you certainly want to get a copy of the shot records, uh, any medications that, that might be needed along the way in a first aid kit. Again, depending on where you plan to travel, call ahead. Make sure your pet is welcome at the destination of your choice. Uh, Wherever you decide to go, your pet should be obedience trained. They should walk calmly on a leash. They should wait in front of doors so they don't mow people down. And once again, you should be very polite, tip generously, uh, and clean up after your dog so that other pet owners will be welcome uh, in, in the years to come. When it comes to food and treats, uh, the traveling, no matter where you're going or how you're getting there, uh, it's it's stressful for your pet. Any change from normal equals pet stress. So if you can bring a little supply of the normal food and water, that's a, that's a great idea. Um, there are uh, holistic calming remedies. Uh, for example, Black's Five Flower Rescue Remedy, a combination of uh, five flowers made into a little liquid. Uh, it's homeopathic, has no adverse re effects. But a couple drops in your pet's mouth, food, or water just kind of takes the edge off so they can relax. Kind of like, Paul, you and I may be having a little glass of wine. Um, and some of these essential oils in, in my veterinary office here in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, uh, I use a, three types of chamomile with blue cypress. And we uh, sprinkle a couple drops on the pet's fur. It smells great, calms them down. And, you know, you can apply things like that twice a day. If you're using essential oils, make sure that they're specifically made for your pet, be it a dog, you know, or a cat. You know, if, if you're in the car, remember, uh, parked cars are a big no-no. Uh, it gets real hot inside of a parked car. You know, if it's 80 outside, in 10 or 15 minutes, it could be over 100 within the car. So never leave your pet in a parked car. And if you're planning on going shopping, again, leave your pet at the resort uh, or with someone, but the parked cars definitely not where you want to leave your pet. I was wondering if there's any any breeds of animals that for one reason or another physical characteristics or something like that shouldn't travel in an area where they're uh, confined because it, it, it not only might may they not be stressed out. Uh, if you have a short-nosed dog, uh, we call them brachiocephalic, but you know, pugs, Frenchies, bulldogs, Bostons, um, they already have a breathing compromise uh, by virtue of the breed. Uh, so if you're traveling on an airplane, uh, ideally, pet should be in the cabin with you. If uh, you have uh, a pet that for some reason 
has to go in the cargo section. Uh, you want to be sure that there are no flowers in cargo. Flowers are packed in dry ice, the fumes of which uh, are very toxic to dogs, especially the ones uh, with the short noses. Um, and just in general, if you're traveling by plane, you want to book a nonstop flight. And um, if you're having difficulty, there are airlines like PetAirways.com. That's an airline just dedicated to dogs. They have uh, many venues as far as where they travel to and from. They do a nice job, and uh, their only job is to make sure your pet has a happy flight. So there are all kinds of things uh, that are available for people traveling with their pets uh, to make it just as good as it can be. Uh, in the car, certainly, um, whether you get a, a seat belt or a uh, you know, a little travel, a little uh, travel carrier, um, all those things you want to do well ahead of time so that by the time you're going to travel, there's nothing new and your pet is used to, you know, as I said, the carrier, the, the seat belt, whatever it might be, and that will enable your trip to be pretty much just as good as it can be when it comes to the comfort of your pet. Speaking of carriers, doctor, could you give people a thumb rule of thumb perhaps as to what the size of a carrier should be in in proportion to the size of the animal sure uh in general uh and, and especially for airlines a carrier should be big enough and i quote for your pet to sit down stand up turn around and lie down certainly if you're traveling by car uh, and you're using a carrier it can be you know larger than that uh, on an airline understandably um, space is a is, is a commodity could you briefly explain to, to listeners what the difference between a service animal and some other category of animal which people think of as as unusual or special but which entitles specifically a service animal to travel in, in ways that, that, that a pet who is otherwise not of that category wouldn't qualify for because people sometimes confuse what who is eligible and who's not eligible to enter certain areas. You know, that, that's a great point. And the rules for many airlines have changed over the years, unfortunately, because uh, sometimes individuals can take advantage of a good thing, so to speak. Um, so if you have a certain animal uh, that is a service animal or an animal for which you have gotten a certificate saying that he or she is a service animal, uh, the big thing with service animals is, uh, at least um, in many airlines, they fly free. Personally, uh, I would call the specific airline address your type of service animal so that you know uh, exactly what the situation is when it comes to dollars and cents and uh, traveling with your pet by air. Could you tell listeners what the contact point is if they would like to find out further information beyond what we've uh, spent the last few minutes speaking with, and perhaps a website or something of that nature yeah. that they could, they could reach out for, uh, to you for? Yeah, absolutely. We welcome calls from pet lovers coast to coast. Uh, you can give us a ring toll free at 855-372-2765, which is just 855-DR-CAROL, uh, D-R-C-A-R-O-L, that's toll free. You can visit us online, uh, Chagrin Falls Pet Clinic com. That's kind of a long one. Chagrin is C-H-A-G-R-I-N, Falls Pet Clinic. That's an Indian term uh, referring to rivers. Um, and our other website is just drcarol.com, which is uh, abbreviated D-R-C-A-R-O-L.com. Thank you very much for the generosity of your time uh, on, a, on, on a day when you may very well be practicing uh, for the friends <laughs> in front of you. Thank you very much for uh, being willing to speak. Well, thank you, Paul, and I'd love to talk pets with you at any time you might want to. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049 or write to office at wihsradio.org. Opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.